Hello and welcome into the game 65 and game 66 Bruins fan review. Both these games were against the Blackhawks this weekend and this video is a little late because they were both around 1 p.m. noon time so I was not able to watch them because I had things to do on Saturday and Sunday. I was not around to watch them at the intended times they were put on. So a little late I decided to couple them together since they were both like less than 24 hours apart I didn't have time to do them separately and since one game is already two days old thought I'd just put them both together hope you don't mind anyway going into these games I got my notes here so if you see me looking down it's because I'm trying to read the notes um McAvoy and Bergeron are still out Marshawn got injured injured <laughs> Saturday with a collision with Duclair we well pretty sure it's um, just precautionary. I don't think he's actually injured. I think it's more one of those things like he got a little bruise or something and they didn't want him skating on it. Like He's probably fine. He'll probably be playing Tuesday. Uh, playoff pitcher Chicago's out. They have very little to no chance. Mathematically, they're not out, but realistically, we all know they're out. Bruins feel like they're getting uh, locked into the second seed in the Atlantic, especially with how much Tampa's winning. And we have games in hand, and we're pretty well ahead of Toronto at the moment. But a uh, team can go on, a, on the run in the AHL and be back just like that. So, you know. Uh, we ended up splitting the home and away. We won on Saturday at home 7-4, to four, and we lose in Chicago 3-1. to one. Now, not really what you want with who they're facing. You would like to get at least three points of the four. You feel like anything less than that and you're not really playing up to par of where you should be. But uh, not an awful result because, you know, you're tired of all that. Your schedule is very uh, clustered together right now. Lots of games, a uh, few days in between. So, I mean, you can live with it, but you want to get more than two points. Uh, the first game, the Bruins outshot the Blackhawks 40-27. to Went 4 for 6 on the power play, which is insane. That is good. The Bruins' power play is starting to click. Hawks went over 2 on that. Uh, fun fact on the year, Duncan Keith has 6 primary points, or 7 now, which is uh, awful. And if you watch Duncan Keith play Saturday, awful is a pretty good word to describe him this year. Uh, he had the lowest time on the ice for the Hawks' defense, and he was still a minus 2 on Saturday. Thought that was interesting with how much of a workhorse he's been. They probably just don't want to overuse him, and I bet he's not really trying too hard out there because he knows the games don't mean anything. Uh, John Francois Berube saved 33 of 39 shots against him. Only one goal against at even strength, though, so can't really blame JF Berube too much, can you now? Uh, Rast stopped 23 of 27. Not a good day, but good enough for how many goals we put up. Um, and now we'll go over the goals, goal by goal, description by description. Uh, Bruins' first goal was a shorthanded goal by Noel Achari from Sean Corrali. Uh, Duncan Keith made a turnover on the blue line. A very uncharacteristic, but as Hawks fans, they probably say he's been doing this all year. Uh, he turns over. Sean Corrali kind of picks him off, I guess you'd say, too. Good on Corrali. Breakaway. Uh, not the best hands on Corrali, but he's got decent speed, so he avoids Keith's ba uh, back check. So uh, he shoots it, it kind of lays out in front. Noel Achari comes, buries the rebound, and it's reviewed, but it was very minimal contact, and the goal stands. That was, at a, a, that was 11 minutes and 27 seconds into the game. Flip to my second page of notes. Uh, Bees go up 2-0, 14 minutes and 10 seconds into the first. Krejci's 15th from DeBrusque and Holden on the power play. Krejci's been starting to get a goal-scoring touch here, and it's kind of surprising because you think Rick Nash would be the one on that line. Uh, the goal is on the power play. Gianta brings the puck into the zone, passes to Holden at the point. Holden slides it down the boards to the Barusk and finds Krejci wide open in the slot. He goes top shelf. Keith got dragged behind the net, which I found kind of interesting because on the penalty kill, you're supposed to say, now in front, you know, you kind of give them the space behind the net. He, Him going down below the net led to Krejci being wide open in the slot, which led to the goal because Krejci went uh, top shelf. 
Uh, Chicago scored at the 1427 mark into the first period. Taves 19th of the season from Gustafson and Kane. Shot from the point deflected off Taves in front. Corrali uh, or Achari probably needed to cover the point. <laughs> they definitely did. Left him wide open, got the shot off, and it took an unfortunate bounce. And just like that, 2-1. Two, two, uh, two uh, Chicago would tie the game 2-2. Two, two. Eric Gustafson's third of the year. He had a very good weekend versus us from Schmaltz and Debrinkit. Uh, very basic shot from the point here. Uh, it was a pass from Schmaltz where he was like up at the point with him. Couldn't really defend it too much. Hayden was screening Tuka. Hayden was uh, doing a decent job this whole weekend, just being a pest. And uh, Tuka doesn't see it. It ends up in the back of his net, tied 2-2. Chicago then go up 3-2. Uh, Hayden again uh, from Sharp in camp. Camp with a great back check on Riley Nash. Really made it uncomfortable. Turns the puck over. Hayden comes and scoops it up after Camp's back check. Comes in two-on-one with Patrick Sharp versus Tory Krug. He decides to shoot it, and shoot he does, and it ends up in the back of the net. Passed to Karask. 3-2 Chicago. The Bruins are then tied up with 10.05 to go in the second. Krejci 16th from DeBrusque and Gianta. Gianta had a decent weekend. Uh, Taves won the faceoff, threw it around the boards. I believe uh, Keith was the one who did that. Krug keeps it in, throws it back in the zone. Keith bobbles it. Keith did not have a good game. Uh, DeBrus picks it up, beats Keith. Uh, then Seabrook lays out, goes around Seabrook very patiently, slides it over to Krejci, who has basically an empty net because of the great pass, and he buries it. Uh, very good uh, combo of Krejci and Spooner. Ah, Sp <laughs> not Ryan Spooner. Krejci and DeBrusk. Very good combo. Okay, let me reset after that. So it's a tie game at the moment. Uh, Chicago would make it 4-3, 15 minutes and 46 seconds into the second. So around five minutes left in the second, something like that. Uh, Highmore, uh, never heard of this guy before. I believe it's his first of his career. Might just be first of the year. I think it's first of the career, though. Uh, from Gustafson, hear that name a lot, and Anisimov. Uh, Gustafson made a great move to beat Rick Nash at the point. Like a little, uh, uh. Like, yeah, I hope you like the body movements like that, but, like, you know, it's the best way I can do it on here. Uh, beat strength Nash. DeBrusque is forced to come over to take on Gustafson. Otherwise, he'll have it currently into the slot. Highmore gets open in the Ovechkin like position and goes under Tuka's uh, blocker. Yeah, he goes under Tuka's blocker. And you, you kind of look at this and you're like, Rick Nash shouldn't be getting beat. Uh, Tuka should save that shot. And this goal shouldn't happen, but, you know, that's hockey. It happens. And, uh, yeah, so the Bruins down 4-3. Uh, it would be till the third period we tie it up. Six minutes and 23 seconds into the third. Postnerock gets his 24th from Marshawn and Riley Nash. Nash made a nifty little juggle where he, like, bounced it up like that. Pass Kopf, entered the zone. Pass to Marshawn on the left wing. He shoots. Big rebound to the right side. Postnerock puts it in. Uh, looked like uh, J.F. Berube didn't really know where the puck was. BC didn't really try to get over after it landed to his left side right in front of the net. And uh, Posternock made a good net drive, and he put it in. like to see that Posternock. He's not the most physical player, but he can be when he wants to be. So I'd like to see that more from him. Uh, the Bruins, again, would uh, score and make it... Oh, this is a uh, Pat Kane slash thing. So uh, both games had a double minor. Both games were kind of won based on those double minors. And this one's Pat Kane. Um, and Pat Kane would benefit from the one on Sunday, not the one on Saturday, though. So he uh, high sticks. I don't know who he high sticked. I, don't, I didn't write that down. My bad. But uh, high sticking, double minor, so you get two penalties. And uh, very shortly into it, Gianta gets his second of the season from DeBrusque and Grizzlick. Uh, Grizzly shot from the point, blocked, but goes on net. It, like, hits DeBrusque after it hits a Blackhawk and, uh, finds Geo basically at the same spot Pasternak buried it in. And, again, J.F. Berube, his rebound control, you know, I wouldn't really blame this one on him, though, because that puck movement was, uh, crazy on him. Like, it hit DeBrusque, went to the left, went to the right, then landed right in front of Geo. There was no chance for J.F. Berube on this one. And Geo picks up the trash. Fun fact. Giante had a 48-goal season once. Did not realize he had that high of a goal-scoring season. Especially when you look, he has like 300 goals, and like one-sixth of his goals came that year. Pretty interesting. 
Anyway, same power play. Oh, no, no. Yeah, same power play. Uh, Rick Nash from Krug and Marshawn. Uh, working around the zone, Krug realizes that the big man, Rick Nash, 6'5", 200 whatever pounds, is just sitting in front of the net. He whips it in front of the net, and Nash gets a tip. It beats J.F. Berube, and that's 6-4 Bruins. Game is basically iced with the empty netter by Sean Corrali from uh, Schaller and Chara. DeBrusque had three assists on the day. Krejci had two goals. Marshawn, Gianta, and Corrali had two points. Good to see. 7-4 win. Not a pretty win. You should you should be handling the Blackhawks a lot more cleaner than this. Letting them score four goals against you and getting kind of bailed out by a high sticking penalty, which is basically what Chicago had happen the day after. But you should be beating them more handily if you're going to be winning a game like this. Uh, three goal differential. Doesn't really paint the whole picture though. Uh, so let me move on to Sunday's game with the goals and all that. Uh, this game would end 3-1 in favor of the Blackhawks, sadly. Uh, the Hawks would have uh, 39 shots to the Bruins' 32. Hawks went 2-5 for five on the power play. Most games in the NHL are decided based on power play efficiency. If you have the better power play, you are most likely going to win, it feels like these days, or these two games at least. Forsberg saved 31 of 32 shots, had a solid day. Hudobin, 36 of 39. Wouldn't really put this one on him, but, you know. Is what it is. He gets the L. Uh, Grizzly was the time on ice leader for defenseman with the Bruins, which I thought was very interesting. With 20 minutes and 2 seconds. Not that much for a time on ice leader for a defenseman. Very evenly spread minutes, but I thought it was interesting. He led the pack. Especially with how he gets scratched so like often, it feels like. And he's had a good year. No lie. Uh, Pasta led the team, though, in ice time. With no penalty kill time. We had 5 penalties against and he still had the time on ice with no power play, I mean, uh, penalty kill time. 21 minutes and 57 seconds. That's a lot. Chicago's first goal would come at uh, 7.26 into the first period, so around the 13-minute mark. Anisimov's 20th. He plants himself in front of the net. He's a big guy, too. 6'5", I think, something like that. 6'4". Big. Big. And the assists come from Taze and Gustafson. Uh, it's a power play they're working around. Taze takes a shot from the OV position, as I like to call it, where they're like backwards skating away, kind of at the high uh, upper top of the circle, I guess you'd say, towards the boards, they're backspacing and all that. They're going there. I don't know if I described that well, but like, if you know hockey, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look up Alexander Ovechkin highlights and look at where like what feels like 80% of his goals are scored from. You'll uh, get what I'm saying pretty quickly. Uh, he takes a shot, and it's tipped up over uh, Hudobin's glove side, I want to say, or blocker. I get mixed up on that, but it went uh, tipped and went up and in, and uh, that counts for a goal in the NHL, uh, and it should. <laughs> uh, the Bruins are tied up mid-third. Uh, I don't have detail notes on this game. I did not watch it. Well, I watched the ending live, but I didn't. wasn't following it because, you know, midday Sunday. I was busy, but anyway. Uh, Big Z, Zodano, gets his seventh of the year, assisted by Krejci and DeBrus. Typical breakout, but Big Chara trailers it. Big Chara. What am I talking about? Zodano Chara trailers the breakout, so he doesn't get picked up. Passed by Krejci into the slot, and he snipes. Uh, where did he snipe? Uh, Rister glove side. Yep, that's where it was. And uh, a little later in the period... Uh, very late in the period, Zonano, uh, his stick hits Brandon Saw in the face, and you would have thought Brandon Saw just got shot in the face with a pistol. Holy crap, he threw, he had a yard sale based on this slash. Like, he, he screamed too, like, he embellished, I don't know, diving, I guess, like, I wouldn't call it a dive because he did legitimately get hit in the face, but, um, uh, I don't know, kind of looked kind of weak to me and kind of wimpy in my opinion to throw your stick like that. I don't know, embellishing in my opinion, but like you can't really find him for that. I mean, he got in the face and he was leaking blood. So uh, double minor, and like yesterday, the Bruins took advantage of the double minor. Chicago takes advantage of the double minor today. Patrick Kane, a good 15 seconds into the power play. He snipes top right, bar in. Carlo, a little bit of a screen, but let's be honest, even if Carlo's not there, that puck was labeled for the top of the net. So I'm not too mad at Carlo, who... Takes a lot of heat on Twitter if you read the Twitter feed of what Brandon Carlo does. And uh, 
they're not all wrong, but I think they're a little too aggressive in my opinion. They're a little harsh on the guy. He's only 21. Uh, anyway, uh, same power play. Well, end of the power play, actually. Char comes on the ice. And instead of joining the defensive effort, Char is like, I'm going to go for a change. It's like, no, nah, Char. No, nah. you go You go in the zone and you defend. You are 6'9", well-rested with the two, four, actually four minutes in the box. No excuse. You got to join the play. And uh, Seabrook realized that he drops lower to get into offensive scoring position in the slot. Uh, he is found by Taves, and Seabrook takes a nice shot on that. And, of course, John Hayden is right in front of the net again, and it goes through Hudobin's five-hole, I want to say. I think I remember being five-hole. Chicago wins 3-1. And, uh, yeah, not – it was actually a decent game from the Bruins, no lie, but, like, they didn't do enough to win. I feel like both games, the team that won deserved to win. It wasn't pretty in the first game, but I felt like the Bruins were the better team. Uh, Chicago definitely like was the better team in the second game, even though the Bruins were in it until that double minor. Uh, Taves got three assists on the day. Gustafson, over the two games, had a goal and four assists. He was a monster against the Bruins. Very impressive. Um... Moving on, though, past the home and away. You don't get too mad out on one loss from a home and away. But against the team like the Blackhawks, which is struggling, you get a little, like, you feel like you want more. But uh, let's look to the future. Backus is returning Tuesday against the Hurricanes. That is very good. We need all the help defensively we can get in our forward core. Like, it just has not been pretty with Bergeron, McAvoy out. So Backus coming back will be a big boost to our defensive efforts. Uh, Tampa is still six points ahead of us. We only have two games in hand now instead of the three going into this. That is why like, you should be a little upset as a Bruins fan that we weren't able to get more points. He's now Tampa, who seemingly can't lose in regulation and won't lose in general at the moment. Uh, they're ahead of us, and we don't have the mathematical game in hands to catch up to them. Uh, we're well ahead of Toronto, who is at 87 points. We are at 94 points, by the way. Two more games remaining than Toronto, and we're seven points ahead. You'd like to think we're going to end up ten points ahead of them at the end of the year at the rate we're going, the rate they're going, hopefully. Uh, we got the Hurricanes Tuesday. Then we got the Florida Panthers on, on Thursday. We play the Florida Panthers four more times out of our 15 remaining games. So one-third of them are against the Panthers. So uh, <laughs> we're going to learn just how good Sasha Barkov is. Vincent Trocek, Hubert, and all of them. Trust me, good team. It's going to be a tough test. Uh, they are playing very good at the moment. Then on Saturday, we have Tampa Bay. Huge game. Huge game. Uh, should be a fun one. Hopefully, uh, Marshawn's in by then. Back is in by then. We got no more injuries. We know Bergeron is not going to play. McAvoy is not due back until early April. So, uh... It's not really a playoff preview because two of our best players might not play. But uh, it's still going to be a fun game versus Tampa Bay and their high-powered offense. Uh, should be fun. Anyway, plus we have three more games versus Tampa for the rest of the year. So it's not the last time we're going to be seeing them before the playoffs. Um, like Marshawn's injury is described as upper body. I think they're just being precautionary, though. I think he'll be good. Um, Bergeron isn't coming on the road trip, so the earliest he can return is the 19th versus Columbus at home. Uh, it said at least two weeks from February 27th on Roto World, which is what I use for injuries and all that. Uh, we're getting to that point. It's almost two weeks. He's guaranteed to be out the road trip. So the 19th, that's about three weeks, which, you know, sounds like he should be good to go. Plus, I hear he's in a walking boot just for precautionary reasons and healing reasons and that, like, He's pretty good, it's just rest-related, and, you know, why rush him back when you're basically locked into the second seed of your division? Uh, like I said, McAvoy's out to early April, back is back on Tuesday. Uh, we do not have another back-to-back -back until the 31st of this month and the 1st of April, where you take on Florida at home and then Philadelphia away. So that's a tough little back-to-back -back against two decent teams. I'd like to go one and one like we did against the Blackhawks this weekend then. And hopefully we win most of our games besides that. And at least stay in the second seed. Because, like, moving up, like, yes, you want home if you face Tampa. But you definitely want first in the first round. So second seed in the Atlantic, you can live with that. You're not going to be too upset. So uh, that's it for this uh, Bruins review. Two games, a little longer than usual probably. 
But, uh, you know, you got to talk about what you need to talk about. And uh, I hope you guys tune in for my next video, which will probably be coming out Wednesday morning after the game Tuesday night. And uh, please hit like and subscribe if you like my video. If you have any suggestions, down, put them down below in the comments. And uh, have a nice day. I'm Pat Tar 98 I'll see you later.